Hello, welcome to another tutorial video. What we're going to be looking at now is the poem Poppies. So we start off with enjambment, and that's really powerful here because it allows us again to focus on words. So here we've got steel, the softening, for example. The enjambment there allows us to really hold on this point. The alliteration here helps, but we might come to that in the language. Um, it allows us to really focus on the fact that she's trying to hold this together before we move on and then thinking about her holding it together and then the kind of face she's trying to put on is quite important and this associates with the word brave that we actually see her use of herself later on so it's all part and parcel and well merged but the the enjambment there really focus on it and then a little later here for example with the word traced the enjambment there is really far powerful as well because it gets us to hold on this world and word sorry and look as she's looking at the the memorial so secondly we've got this four stanzas in the structure which represent stages and a reveal of emotions so these stages you can first of all see them are her with her son her with memories of her son her relaying her um, emotions become released and then her looking at other people's pain but in terms of the reveal of her own emotions, here we actually see she's trying to actually just go about her, her day as she should, you know, doing the right thing for her son. Here we actually see her thoughts and feelings are becoming more evident as she has this memory here with the Eskimos remembering when they were little. And then we have her actual emotions coming out uh, in this part here. The uh, went into your bedroom, released a songbird from its cage. <coughs> cage which just shows however overwhelmed she was and she's finally letting out how she actually feels um in whatever way that that you obviously you can envisage and then later on she's got the emotions when she's actually um looking at other people's uh, loss and sadness and then just obviously sitting there just hoping praying that her son comes back to her etc some people say that they look at this and they, they feel that this her son has died um as well in this but i think the actual the way it starts with regards to time that this is um you know specifically on this day this has happened you know the sun leaves on this day i don't think there's enough time for the sun to actually die in between there but if you feel a reading where this is about her dead son as well then obviously if you can justify it go go for it um so the last thing i want to mention for structure then is the switch from them to her so in these first two stanzas we've got this representation of different parts of their relationship both in memory and in actually what's going on you know the mother just tidying him up and wishing him all the best before he goes and then we've got her the last two says is just about her and how she actually feels about it so there's a really interesting contrast there um going from the almost image or the portrayal that we have of this then going into the psychology of it how the mother actually feels so we move on to meaning then and the first meaning that we have obviously is dealing with worry the idea of the family and the stresses that they go under when this happens and this comes through very clearly to us when she uh, lets out her emotions here and when she puts her hand on the war memorial because looking at these two things shows us the family impulse of the mother and then obviously family um, suffering for all the people that are actually on that on that wall we also have the idea of the um the mother and son uh sorry we also have the idea i've skipped a bit we also have the idea of what war brings in terms of um, the death and that's put straight away in the poppies because that's what we've come to associate with obviously in the title as well it's called poppies and we've got them referenced there etc and we've got it again as she uh, again some of the items already mentioned when we go to the church skirting the church walls we get this idea of death and also my stomach is busy making tuck starts and pleats so all the physical representation there of her worry in her stomach because she knows the you know that her son might end up amongst these uh, tombs to sorry um gravestones that she's actually looking at at the moment so that again ties into the idea of death and, and it being a worry and a fear for her so those two are quite linked but slightly different ways third thing we look at is obviously the bravery now the bravery is important because we've got the soldier here with his upturned collar and you know ready to go off into uh, pristine and ready to go off into war so he's very brave in of doing that but then she actually says of herself i was brave 
to actually allow you to go and to help you when I've got all these fears and worries in myself and everything upsetting me. So the idea of bravery, not just of the soldier, but of the extension of the family members who support and encourage, etc., um, is really, really important. I was actually having a discussion with this amount with, a, with an American um, gentleman the other day, and uh, we were just discussing some of the wars that America had been in, and, and he'd said, look, a lot of people don't support the wars, but we sure as hell support the American troops. And that kind of reminds me of that. It doesn't really, it doesn't really, uh, the actual situation itself is secondary to the actual support and the bravery and the, the love and care and the um, just general, I, I guess I can only call it raising up of like the military personnel etc etc and to do that you have to put on a brave face because this isn't something easy that soldiers go into etc so that's really highlighted in the fact that she actually mentions it to herself there and we have actually like example of exactly how she did it just uh, just there especially in contrast to what she wanted to do and uh, the other uh, meaning the theme or idea that comes through from us is the sharing another's grief and that really comes um, a little lower down when we look at the breakdown on this with regards to how she feels after looking about it especially when she leans against it and obviously the the line of a wishbone how she's actually uh, kind of set herself against it you know is is that mothering is that natural is that making a link is that making a connection is that protective is it something that can be broken really easily the the word wishbone there can really be analyzed quite quite um, full on if you wished but the the physical effects are hit noted here as well and how it actually affects her stomach um yeah so moving on to images we've got the image of the graveyard and we've got the image of the mother in it i think that's really powerful just looking at her hand there tracing the uh, the images we've also got the image of the mother and son and the mature you know she's actually dressing him here pinning him to the lapel making sure he looks the part of you know this proud soldier and then this little childish connection that they had and she wanted to to actually treat him that way and obviously that's a reference in some way to a protect or or the love that she wants to show but maybe she can't do it because first of all there's a series of the situation that he's going to go off into war but second of all because it just would be a stark contrast to to the, the how he wants to be treated um as a, as a grown soldier um, but who knows maybe the maybe the the son here actually feels the same thing maybe he does just want his mom to, to treat him like a kid again and, and so it's it's about one of the unsaid things as well and i think it's a really powerful image we've got the dove that comes through a couple of times here and here and i think that is quite representative of peace and maybe peace with oneself so here when she actually when we see it in this part uh, it's to do with she can be at peace in herself and being honest you know she doesn't want to put on airs or graces or anything she just let herself be free and just feel what she's feeling and and go and and, and um analyze one of her darkest fears and, and and what she's thinking of and then down here when the dove pulls against the sky and she's watching it that gives her maybe a little bit of hope you know a little bit of an idea of um of the something good could actually happen and that's why she hopes to hear is the playground voice again just letting that memory go into something better letting it, letting it go into something warm and we've got the image of the poppies obviously the poppies and um, what they represent in terms of um, commemorating the fall and etc um, that one's quite obvious and you can take it from the name of the poem as well so looking at language then or specific word I want to focus on is spasms i think that's a brilliant word here because a uh, spasm obviously can refer to a, a little uh, a pain that you might r feel but it's also kind of a little explosion of in, in a positive sense so you get this little explosions of red paper around it um and the, the idea of the the explosions or a little just kind of burst of something they can remind us of the um the spasms of uh of oh, sorry it's sporadic or uh, explosions or something that you know that just kind of bursts and the idea of tying it to the red there is obviously the red of blood it could also be tied into that with the death and this is obviously what's on uh, sorry on her mind at the back of her mind and uh, looking at the paper there with that description i think it's just great especially with the with the word spasms can also be taken in terms of the way she's trying to hold herself but we imagine when she's doing this maybe she can't do it flawlessly you know there there have been little spasmodic momentary uh, lapses where she 
maybe has to hold back a tear or or kind of bite her lip or something that just shows her true emotion and feeling in, in that we've also got the specific uh, the language of the word brave when they're used to refer, refer to herself and i think that's really important because though he goes out and is considered brave she puts she psychologically has to be brave first and foremost so the interesting way of seeing braveness being internalized or bravery should i say being internalized rather than externalized is uh, is definitely worth analyzing uh we've also got even though i haven't mentioned it there we've got the alliteration mentioned here still the softening which just really emphasizing how how emphasizes sorry how hard she was actually trying to hold it together and we've got the another two words i wanted to analyze we've got the bedroom and the cage after you'd gone i went into your bedroom released a songbird from its cage i thought there was an interesting contradiction in this because some people when their children die they leave their bedrooms as some kind of testimony to them they live in exactly the same way it was and, and that's how they kind of live and, and have things so in saying that after you'd gone i went into your bedroom released a songbird from its cage i let my emotions out etc on another level in another way we've gone into the bedroom here which might one day become a cage uh, a cage of emotions a cage of feelings something they can't a cage for her she can't actually let herself out of it you know if the worst happens to a son and i just thought even though that's an extension it's you, you have to make a couple of connections to get there even though it's an extension it's worth highlighting because of the idea of what's being held back and what's being let go throughout the poem and uh, the idea that going into her bedroom in the bedroom here for some kind of solace to let something out whereas later on it might be something that traps her and holds her back is 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 really interesting so the effects on the reader then it gets us thinking about sacrifice just um a mother almost maybe perhaps the mothers and fathers who sacrifice their children the 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 the, the, the soldiers who sacrifice themselves etc gets us thinking about the links of family and how hard it must be to to let go of someone like that and to let them go off and do obviously what, what needs to be done uh, and what they want to do in many cases uh, we've got to we've got to look at how, how much t um that would play on emotions and make people sad etc and lastly we've got the hidden emotions and the fronts people put up like the mother is actually trying to put on here and maybe the soldier is putting on as well and then what happens when they actually come down and i think that's really relevant not just to people who go off to the war but that's everyday life the, the fronts people are putting on and the hidden emotions how they're really feeling it's um yeah it's, it's an excellent poem